Welcome, collectors, to Episode 7 of the HO Files. For those of you that have watched the previous videos, number one, thank you so much for your support. And uh, number two, thank you so much for the overwhelming response and kind remarks. Uh, in Part 7, we're going to be looking at the State Highway Department Highway Garage, which, again, is one of the more crowded and uh, visceral scenes on my layout, which is pretty fun to look at because it's something that's always changing. I'm always adding and removing vehicles and components so that it looks like it's a very busy and fluid uh, government building, which obviously would mimic the real world situation. The basic building, and I will show you it as we clear some of these trucks out of the way so you can get a better view, is another one by MX, which I have since found out are basically cold cast resin uh, buildings, which again are ready-made structures. So if you're looking for something that requires very little effort and should just plop on your layout that you don't have to assemble, these are a really good option for you, and they have good hefty weight to them too. Uh, so obviously they aren't plastic. All right, moving on. I also have this accessory, which does not come with it, but I have this little rental tank, which is kind of cool that if you would obviously have a yard with any amount of equipment or vehicles, this is a must. This is a plastic component. But as you can see, it has a good amount of detail. And if you really wanted to, you can strip and paint this and make it match everything else. So that is the tank. Let's go ahead and get started with some of the fleet vehicles. This is a interesting little piece because uh, when I ordered this, I actually thought that this was orange because the description says orange. And it's not. It's more of a yellow-orange, that's all right. As you can see, it is a 1993 Ford Explorer by Atlas. They do make a bunch of different versions of this Explorer, this SUV. Uh, this is the orange unlettered version with a beacon light up on top. I thought it would be perfect as kind of a supervisor's vehicle. Um, but again, the color really doesn't match that well. But I guess it could be worse, I suppose. Uh, the other, like, supervising vehicle I have, this is a River Point Station Ford. I believe this is an F-250 that I added one of the Kibri beacon lights to it. And that's really all I did. So I usually use this as an escort vehicle if I'm hauling something on a low boy. Uh, or also a supervisor's truck, depending on whatever I'm using it for in the layout. But it's not a bad-looking truck. All right, on to some of the trucks. So many of these that you'll see are the standard Walther Scene Master HO scale trucks that you can get straight off the pegs. Some of them have been slightly modified, some of them heavily modified, and some of them by other uh, manufacturers. This one is kind of an interesting story. Uh, this is a cheap Hot Wheels toy that um, I stripped and modified and kind of wanted to make it look like it was a water tanker. Um, I added a Volvo grill because the casting, to me, somewhat looked like a Volvo truck. I also added Matchbox rear wheels, Premier rear, rear wheels, say that ten times fast. And then I added, um, I believe these are Scene Master drive wheels or steer wheels. Haven't really gotten around to doing much else on this, including adding the all-important spray bar or a nozzle that you would need. But it was one of my first trucks that I did, uh, so I will at some, at some point finish this up. Next, we have a Matchbox Real Working Rigs. This is an Oshkosh Snowplow. Very nice-looking truck. Again, the Real Working Rigs, for the most part, are always very close to HO scale. And uh, this is no exception. It comes with a plow, which you can take off if you want. Working dump box. And then a working tailgate. I will eventually swap these wheels out for something that looks more realistic and add some proper mirrors to it. But really, that's about all it needs. It's a pretty solid looking truck. All right, this is a Bowley GMC Top Kick plow and salter. There you can see the salter body on it. 
which goes up and down, and the plow moves as well. Nice detailing on this truck. This was also a custom done by me relatively recently. Uh, this was a Chevy um, something or another matchbox plow that I painted in the fleet orange, added some GMC wheels to it, Chevy wheels to it, added some brass, not brass, sorry, uh, steel up here on top of the plow, printed out the grill, which I made, and did some other work to it as well, including adding that decal to the back. For a dollar toy that I've had since a kid, since, uh, since I was a kid, I think it turned out okay. And it looks pretty decent, too. A lot of m municipalities and things will have these older trucks in their fleet, especially for uh, winter time. So often you will still see vehicles like this around. All right, have a couple stake beds. This is a three-axle stake bed, also by Bully. If I had anything to complain about back in the Bully days, early on, some of these had the international logos on the door, and I really hated that. Of course, you could remove it, um, but there was always the chance that you would take off some of the paint. Eventually... It only took them a couple years to realize, hey, let's not put the decal on the door. Let's include it on a little sticker so that the consumer can put the decal on the door if they so desire. Here's another Bully steak bed with a slightly different kind. This one has some toolboxes and stuff on the side. I picked a lot of these trucks off, a lot of these Bully older trucks off of a lot I purchased on Facebook not too long ago from a guy on there. Which I got a pretty nice deal on. Here's another one. Old Bully International Dump Truck. Single axle dump truck. Here's a newer one. This is one you can still get today. By Scene Master. And then here is a custom one I did. Where I added an extra axle. Which I'm still planning on doing some more things too. Sticking with dump trucks, here's a GMC. And all of these have the same dump box. Uh, this is an international, which I added a lift axle to. Here's a new Walther's one, which I did a few different things to, including adding the DOT striping and added these wooden. Um, boards too, which I think look pretty decent. And this is just an older, another older Bowley one. Here's a flatbed. All right, on to some interesting stuff, good stuff. Here is a um, Walther's International Dump Truck. This you can get. And this is a 3D printed attenuator kit from the Model Mechanic. Which again, you probably have seen that video already on my channel. If you haven't, I'll post a suggested link at the top of the screen right now. Check out. Uh, you can make this fold up and over the truck when it's out of service. I just, for really ease of use, I just glued mine into position. So there is one type of attenuator, and then this is another type of attenuator that you can also get from the same guy. And this one has the arrow, and then that type of cushion. Pretty cool. Okay, let's pick up over here. Say a uh, Peterbilt stake bed. This is a newer edition. These are removable too, so if you just wanted this as a flatbed, you can take all these off, just as you see right there, and put them on. 
in any of these holes. Another international bucket truck. This one's in orange. If you guys saw the uh, utility building video, part one of this series, you've already seen these trucks. Here's another one. And this one. Again, all three of those you saw in the part one. Here we have a garbage truck. This opens, which is cool. And the dumpster, or the garbage can goes up and down. Another bully from back in the day. Over here, another Matchbox working rigs, which I have modified. You have one of the sewer cleaning trucks. This moves. Added the uh, vac truck decal here. And that decal, and then that decal. Again, not done, but one of my earlier customs from uh, several, several, several years ago. And then we have the roll-off dumpster truck, which has a roll-off dumpster. All right, back over here. Here is a Trucks and Stuff a Peterbilt tri Well, I guess this wouldn't be a tri-axle because it has a lift axle. Tandem axle with a lift axle tractor, often used for hauling the, low the heavy equipment around. Here's a single axle international tractor. This one I, this one I like a lot because I did a couple things too. Like adding some flags and the beacon light to it. Again, another Walther's Scene Master International. Here's a newer style international. This one has some airlines and things on it. And then we have a Ford C Series from way back in the day. This is a beautiful truck. Okay. As for trailers, which you can probably barely see, but they're back there in the back of the yard. Have a low boy trailer. This is by Norscott. Um, I swapped the stock wheels out because I didn't like them. So these wheels are from... Um, Walther's Scene Master. I think they look a little bit better on there. And I added the oversized load sign. Have a Promatex dump trailer. Which I will be doing the same to this. Getting rid of these wheels. And there's your dump trailer. And then this is the trailer that goes with the Ford C-Series truck from Aethern that you saw just a little while ago. All right, we'll wrap the video up with the last of the custom trucks from the uh, 3D printing site Shapeways from the Model Mechanic. This is one of the ones I'm most proud of. So this is a uh, entire asphalt distributor truck. Again, project that's still in progress, I added all of these decals to it. Here's your spray bar, which does go up and down. All of the nozzles are, the top of the nozzle tips are painted in yellow. And again, you can pose them going up or down. We have a patcher truck, asphalt patcher truck. Right here and again just in case you're familiar or you're just you know finding out about these kits for the first time they don't come with the chassis or the truck they just come with the body and they are available in other scales besides HO scale um, the compactor though on the left hand side does come with it which is a nice touch it's hard to see all the details on this one because it's all black but there's the patcher truck 
And last but certainly not least, by far one of the highlights of customs that I've done is the mechanics truck, the service truck. So this has a lot of um, stuff and giggles, if you will, on it. Such as, if you start from the rear, there's an igloo cooler, a vise over on the right-hand side. If you look from the top down, there's a Miller uh, welder, different toolbox up on top. There's some oil barrels, some tires, and then there's a compressor in the back along with some, um, some uh, welding tanks also. So pretty nice little truck to look at. So, there you have it, collectors. That concludes, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're already on part 7 of the HO Files. Again, I hope you guys have been very much enjoying this series. Please drop me a comment down below if you have. Let me know which of these trucks that you really enjoyed, and perhaps if you have any of these on your layout. As always, if you have not yet, please subscribe and rate the channel. It helps me out very, very much. And thank you guys again for watching. I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.